welcome to another GCSE Economics video with me, Mr. Goff, for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on the distribution of incomes. In the UK, incomes are quite unequally distributed. As you can see from this chart here, the top 20% of earners in the UK earn 40% of all income, while the bottom 20% of earners earn only 8% of all income. The gap between gross incomes of the highest earners and the lowest earners is actually much higher than is shown here, but the UK's progressive tax system shifts the balance back a bit because it takes a higher amount of tax from higher earners and people that are earning benefits, for instance, would pay no tax at all. There are a number of factors that contribute to the unequal distribution of gross incomes in the first place. We're going to take a look at each of these in more detail now. Wealth can generate income for its owners, whether that be interest income from savings, rent income from renting out assets, or profits that you receive from owning a business or shares in a business. However, not everybody has wealth, and as we will see in the next video, wealth is in fact even more unequally distributed in the UK than income is. So some people will earn a lot of income from their wealth, while others will earn none at all. This chart shows the median wage in the UK by both age and gender. In terms of age, you can see that younger workers get paid less. This is because they lack the experience needed for senior roles. Older workers start to drop off in their average wage rates because some of them may choose to retire or work less. It may surprise you to know that the gender pay gap is still a real thing in the UK. You can see here that median wages for women lag behind median wages for men. This gap increases for higher paying roles, where despite efforts to move towards equal pay and underrepresentation of women in the most prestigious and highest paying jobs, means that there's still a more significant gap. The type of job a person does will greatly affect the income they receive from it. Jobs that require more skills and experience tend to receive higher pay. So someone that's going for a job as a CEO or a professional with a very high skill set is able to earn a very high wage. Meanwhile, someone that has a low level of skills may have to go for jobs that are paying the minimum wage. Children from households that are wealthier and have higher incomes are likely to have a higher quality of education. This may be because they've been able to pay for that education or because education is better in their area than it might be in an area where people with lower incomes live, where it might be more deprived and the schooling system may not be as strong. This can contribute to continuing differences in income between different groups. In addition, the more you earn, the more you're likely to be able to have left over at the end of a month to be able to have some savings. These savings will then provide you with further income in the future. Those on benefits will have the lowest income and will likely not be able to save at all. That brings us to the end of this look at the distribution of incomes. Join me again in the next video where we'll be looking at the distribution of wealth in the UK. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics. And until next time, it's bye for now.